So tell me something good. Such as? Such as something good, something on your mind. Nothing. Nothing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You said nothing, huh? <laughs> said, not really. That's funny. Not really. I mean, you know, it's just really exerted, you know, to, to even try to think. This black guy drove the van and all those people and killed all those people. In Wisconsin. Is that right? Yeah. Daryl Brooks. With his braided hair mm. and stuff. Drove and killed all those people and, and injured all those people and those kids. Mm -hmm. You never know what's going on from day to day. Sure don't. I mean, is it any different? Is it any different than it was, you know, you know, 50, 60 years ago? Well, the thing of it is, Robert, I think about 1958, 1959, when JFK was running against Nixon mm. and Eisenhower was in was president and uh, and the Russians were trying to put missiles in Cuba mm. and uh, and everything the United States we were in bad bad shape that's where the major news entity ran the exposés on how bad things were in the United States, uh, hunger, and how the senators and congressmen would talk about other countries and how bad it is the other countries. But um, the other countries began to look at the United States in the 59, 60, and they began to say, well, United States, you're in bad, bad shape, like they're, like they're saying now. That the United States, they say that the United States is 13th among democratic countries, the worst democratic countries in the world. The United States is 13th. Back then, it was, I, it was about the same. It was bad, bad, bad. There was no relief. But going into 1960, 1961, JFK beat Nixon by 1% in the election. And JFK brought into the United States a whole lot of policies to change the United States like there was no such thing as substantial welfare for people. But he, he brought in the ADC programs, family aid to children. He brought in food stamp programs. Um, he brought in, it took from 19, 61 to 1962 for the Congress to push through the bill MDTA, Manpower Development and Training Act, formulated by JFK, which was a transformational act crossing you know, from taking care of of the population from the infants to the senior citizens, a total program, Manpower Development and Training Act. He brought about community colleges, which provided the opportunity for poor people to 
continue their education even past high school. But none of these programs existed prior to JFK. And JFK only spent two years, two and a half years as president. He won the election in 1960, came into office in January 1961, and was killed in 1963, November 1963. Matter of fact, November 22nd, 1963. And I remember this so well. <laughs> I remember this so well. And I was in Pendleton, Pendleton. And I remembered JFK being killed in Dallas, Texas. But before JFK, none of these programs existed, Robert, just like now. And Biden trying to do the family plan and having the trouble getting it through the Democratic and, and Biden trying to do the programs to help the families all the way down to the bottom and the aid to children, families with children, infant children up to age 17. And Biden's trying to reenact things that we had 50 years ago. <laughs> So yeah, I remember 50 years. Yeah, I remember 50 years ago, Robert. I remember well. <laughs> right, right. I remember very, very well because 50 years ago is today. The United States today. We're slipping, we're going backwards. In 1965, we did get the voting rights privileges and did get Medicare, civil rights opportunities. We got affirmative action, Lyndon Johnson enacted affirmative action. We got a whole lot 50 years ago. Right. And so, yeah, I remember 50 years. Just sitting in this chair. Yeah. Well, I'll just ask you a couple questions real quick, and then. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. When you when you, you know when you wrote your autobiography, which is a very dynamic autobiography, you know, and you recounted all these different years and everything, you know, did before you wrote it, you know, and finished it in 2015, did you ever think that you'd write an autobiography? It never, I never thought the idea of, of writing about myself never entered my mind. But when I could no longer finish the Black Journal and uh, I was beginning to get all this information about ancestry and our ancestors and everything, and that's what stimulated me for weeks and months in 19, in, uh, in, in, in 2015, 2016, getting all the ancestry information and being able to look at uh, our family going back and then looking at the family going back I began to look at myself as part of the family and it was only into the latter part of oh, 2015 or so that the ideal to begin to write about myself and you asked me you 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 gave me the ideal uh, I didn't really think about it, but you gave me the idea that you needed to know what 
happened in my life. And that's the reason I began to write about it. But uh, in putting it together, the ideals and everything, and uh, tracking my background, uh, it came together little by little. And in uh, writing, uh, it, uh, it was very uh, stimulating for me to write about myself. Now, um, what's your, what's your, what would you want for people to get from your autobiography? Now that you've... I, I didn't really write my autobiography for other people. I wrote it for myself. <laughs> right. I really didn't write it for other people. And, uh, and uh, I was very uh, impressed by other people seeing something in my past life experiences. So that kind of stimulated me. But uh, but I wrote it for myself. I didn't really write it for for others to impress others. Right. Right. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. I, the years between from when you completed it to now. So now we're what? Five years later. Five, six years later. Well, well, I finished writing. Chapter five in actually 2016, 2017, I was finished writing chapter five and uh, never even came into my mind to that I was that I'd missed so much to write more, that I could write more, that I could write double what I'd written. Uh, initially, never ran in my mind. A replay of nineteen sixty seven, nineteen sixty eight. Humphrey, Nixon, Wallace, and it's just like the country is just stagnated, gone backwards. We, we went forward for about 30 years. We became stagnant and pretty much held in place for 15 years up until 2005, 2010, and then we began to slide backwards to 20, to 2020. And by 2020, we were, we're back like we were in 19, in the mid 1960s, 19 before Eisenhower did the freeways and the, and the, and the moves of the whites to the suburbs using freeways systems so we we actually we moved in cycles but we've gone backwards with the trump era and the republican party has done a total flip-flop mama low she was a member of the republican party all my youth all the way until I was 17, 18 years old. 
she she worked in the public Republican Party, got Jackie and herself jobs through working with the Republican Party in the State House when I went into service. But the Republican Party is has done a total, total flip-flop in the past 50 years. <laughs>